In this video, I will show you how to do count data models in R. Please first watch the two videos that I have on count data models and count data models example, and now you will be ready to view this video here. I have opened up the R program that I wrote in uh, R Studio, and I have already executed it. Before we start, please make sure that you have installed several packages, uh, MASS, PSCL, and AER, because we will use uh, routines from these uh, three packages. And you can do this by removing this and running these commands, or you can do it from packages right here and install packages. Then you're ready to run the program. The first thing that we're doing here is we're um, reading in the data, and this will be a data on doctor's visits. So I have opened up the data here, and this is what we see. Uh, we have doctor's visits, which is a count variable. It's a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on variable here. And then we have four variables that we will use as independent variables. Whether the individual has private insurance, whether they have Medicaid insurance, what's their age, and the number of years of education that they have. So defining the variables, we would use CBIND doctor's visits into the, our Y variable and we will see bind the other four variables into our independent variable x and we're also going to group these variables also as an x1 because later on in the program I'll show you where these two could differ for this example I don't have them to differ but you could uh, have those um, to, to differ in your program the next thing that we can do is we can summarize our y and x variables and these are the results here for the descriptive statistics. So the mean um, is 6.82, the median is 5. And here's the summary of the independent variables. The way to uh, estimate a Poisson model is to use a GLM procedure. You put the Y variable here, the X variables here, family equals Poisson, and uh, that's, and then you summarize the results. And here are the results that we have here for the Poisson model. And the way to interpret it is that individuals that have private insurance have 15% more visits to the doctors than, than those that don't. And you can interpret the other coefficients in a similar way. The next thing that you can do is the test for over dispersion. And you can do this with dispersion test Poisson, and then you can have this uh, extra option here. And which is uh, the default, that's why I actually left it out. So the results here show that um, for the over dispersion test, you have p-values that are very, very small, and therefore we have um, we are reaching the conclusion that we do have over dispersion in the data, and we should be using the negative binomial model. So looking at these uh, p-values here. The next thing to do is estimate the negative binomial model. And we will do that with glm.nb for negative binomial, and you put x, uh, your y, a squiggly part x. And then you summarize the results. And here are the results here. And uh, you, you will estimate coefficients in a very similar way you will say that if someone has private insurance, they will have 16% more doctor's visits.
Another thing that you can also include here is the theta parameter, which is, um, which is a parameter for the negative binomial model. And you can also include this as part of your, um, your table when you're summarizing the results. Next, we will be estimating hurdle models or truncated models. And these are models where we have for first a binary model for the zero or positive decision. And we would estimate these with the logit model here. And then we would have the truncated models. So we would use hurdle, and this will be y regressed on x. And this x1 here is the independent variables for the truncation uh, model. So here for me, if you look up here, x and x1 are the same, but they don't have to be the same for you. So you can have different independent variables affecting the zero or positive decision versus how many if, they're, if, if, uh, if it's positive. So these, this is the output that we have on this side. And these are the coefficients for the logit model here. Uh, and you can interpret this normally as a logit model. These here are the coefficients for the zero truncated uh, Poisson model. And the same coefficient that we have here on the private independent variable, you will, ask, you will interpret it in this way. For those that have positive number of doctor's visits, those that have private insurance would have close to 9% more doctor's visits. So it's important when you interpret these coefficients here to say, for those that have positive number of doctor's visits, because that's what we're estimating here. Next, we can estimate the negative binomial model. And if you notice these, the commands here are identical as the one above, except instead of distribution equal Poisson, you put negative binomial here. So these are the results that we have here. And again, you estimate uh, the model and the interpretation is very similar. Again, remember to say for those that have positive number of doctor's visits, those that have private insurance are 10, have 10% 10 more uh, doctor's visits. And you can see here the log of theta uh, is the dispersion parameter that you can also summarize in your output. And that's uh, positive and significant, which means we have over dispersion in the data and we need to be using the negative binomial model instead of the Poisson model. The final thing that we can do is zero inflated models. And we can do the Poisson and the negative binomial models. And to accomplish this, we are using zero inflated command here. And this is again the second step uh, of y on x. The first step is the inflated model, the binary model. And here again, you could give different, um, different values, uh, different independent variables for the first step than for the second step. For me, they're the same. Link equals logit, this is for the first step model. And then distribution equals Poisson or negative binomial. And here are the results that we have for the Poisson model. The results here are the uh, inflated model. And notice how these are very different from the previous logit. They're almost opposite in, in sign. However, these results are very close for the second step. Um, but that doesn't have to be the case. It's just that in our case, we have the same variables. And, and uh, perhaps all these models are very close to each other. So. Um, so we have very similar results. So here, the way to interpret this number is that for those that have the propensity to visit doctors, because 
they may have the intention to visit the doctor, but they may have zero doctor's visits. For, for that group that have the, inten the in intention to visit um, doctors, we have that private, if those that have private insurance uh, have 9% more uh, doctor's visits. So again, the magnitudes are very similar. And here are the results for the zero inflated negative binomial model. And again, we have that coefficient of 10%, so it's, it's very similar. And here again, we have the log theta, which is a positive and significant coefficient, which means that we should probably use the zero inflated negative binomial model instead of the zero inflated Poisson model. So this was a video on how to do count data models in R. Thank you for watching.